Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist. That's a CBT therapist and a licensed mental health counselor. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the contents in this channel. This is the case of the idol quadruple murders that took place on the 13th of November, 2022. May the four victims rest in peace, condolence to their families, and may the correct justice be served. I'd like to start by thanking all my subscribers, my viewers, for, for all your thoughtful, intelligent, respectful, mindful, and kind comments. I love the way my subscribers are kind towards each other in the channel, towards me, and that is really appreciated. That's the way we're supposed to be, actually. We're supposed to act and conduct ourselves respectfully and professionally. Today I'd like to talk about the 911 caller and why the 911 caller is so important in this case. Obviously the 911 caller is the person who has either recovered the bodies or has been called in by family or someone, friends, and they've been told to call 911, like in this case. But most cases you see, it's usually the victim trying to call 911 or neighbors or someone. In this case, we have Hunter who called 911. He's not a minor, so I'm not going to leave out his name. And there's a purpose for me mentioning his name. When the 911 caller called 911, there were many people yelling obviously distress emotionally I can imagine at the background. So obviously the 911 operator is not only recording it, is witnessing and hearing all these people. You can imagine, or actually we can't even imagine, walking into a brutal, brutal quadruple murder scene with red liquid everywhere, blood everywhere, on the walls, on the floor, everywhere, trigger warning. So when the 911 call, caller called 911, we don't know what he said to 911. We don't have the people, the other people on the screen, scene spoke to 911. We haven't been told that because it's under gag order. Now, what does gag order mean? Gag order obviously means something that's gagged that they're not going to... They sealed it. They're not going to open it till the trial comes up. So there had to be a reason for the prosecutor, Bill Thompson, to have put the 911 on a gag order. What's the obsession, I believe, is a name, a YouTube channel, who's covered this case too. She's always said that in her live streams, so this is evidence out there, she keeps on talking about the tight relationship or the close relationship she has with the Sigma Chai Fraternity Boys. Now the Sigma Chai Fraternity Boys is important in this case because this is where one of the victims, Zaina's boyfriend E, lived. He was under the fraternity. His triplet brother is still under the fraternity. Hunter Johnson, who called 911, who's not a minor, that's the reason I'm mentioning his name, is a very, very close friend of Zana and E. 
he was E's best friend. So for Hunter to be called before 911 is fishy enough. So if Hunter was called and he came, called 911, 911 was obviously telling him to check the pulse and all, I assume. That's what we heard in the beginning. They were telling him to check E's pulse. So Hunter is an extremely important witness because besides Bethany Funk and DM, Hunter is the third person who walked into the scene. Like who was called into the scene, who physically came into the scene, went into the second floor and found his best friend, E, and Zana deceased. Whether he found him in between the corridor and the doorway, between the corridor and the room at the doorway, if E's body was blocking, trigger warning the door, because all these things have been mentioned. If all of these things happened that E's body was found in between the room and the door, Hunter was called. So Hunter, if not DM and BF, Hunter would have likely been the third person on the scene, unless BF and DM are hiding to us if anyone else came on the scene. So Hunter is extremely important because not only did he call 911, he's allegedly a person who will be definitely, definitely called to the trial. He'll be on the witness stand. They're definitely going to ask him questions like, Hunter, where were you that night? Where were you the morning when you got the call? What did you first see when you entered the house? Did you touch anything? Were you wearing gloves? Who else was in the house? All those questions are going to come into play. So Hunter, I would advise, I would assume actually, sorry, that he must have got himself an attorney. He has parents who would tell him definitely to get himself an attorney, whether he's a witness or whether he's not a witness because he does automatically become a witness. The reason he becomes a witness is because Dylan called him to the scene or BF called him to the scene. So my question is, why is Watt's obsession contacting Hunter and the Sigma fraternity boys? She has said that many times in her lives. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist and a mental health counselor. I heard that Walt's obsession is an occupational therapist or some kind of therapist. If she's a therapist, I don't know about how her line of therapy, how they do things, honestly. But as a mental health counselor, we are taught from the start etiquette, morals, boundaries, and we are taught to keep our boundaries. Boundaries means there's a difference between speculating and between saying the fact that from the start that I'm speculating, discussing a case, putting your ideas and sharing your thoughts with others, not spreading rumors. There's a big difference. But when I come to, when we come to a stage or when I come to a stage that I contact people to ask them about the 911 call or the 4chan article or whatsoever, that automatically, I believe, is a breach of an active case. So what's obsession? If you continue doing such things, you may actually end up hindering this case and you may end up preventing justice and the right person who did this to be arrested. Why is a grown adult woman contacting young boys from the fraternity? We are adult people here. Why is she doing that? As counselors, we're not supposed to be even contacting people 
Because look at it this way, Hunter, Hunter Johnson is emotional. Whether he knows more in this case or whether he doesn't know more in this case, let's be honest. Imagine he was one of the first people to come to the crime scene with everything you can imagine the way it was. People were hysterical. Maybe we heard one of the roommates pass out. We're not even sure about that, but just picture this. It's a horrific scene. It's an emotional scene. He was his best friend. So if that is the case, why would why would you what's obsession be contacting? A young boy who just a young man actually, he's not a boy, he's twenty one, twenty two, he's an adult. Why would you contact a young adult who's through emotional stress? He is through emotional stress because he witnessed or uh, he, he witnessed his friend, his friend's girlfriend, which is a friend of his two, Izana, and the other two victims. He knew Zana, he knew Maddie, he practically was in that house. We've seen hunting many of the clips in the body cams of the videos twice, not once, twice, once with Kaylee, the other time. He and the other boy, Eddie, I believe his name is from the Sigma Chai. Sigma Chai opened the door for the police. Twice. So I really don't understand. Why is Walt's obsession contacting the Sigma Chai boys? I've been asking that from the beginning. We are YouTube creators. When we start contacting the Sigma Chai boys, are we giving them information or are we spreading their stories allegedly on YouTube. That doesn't make sense. So we can't pick and choose on in who we criticize and who we don't. WSU Kim is completely wrong if she, when she's lying about certain things. But certain things she could be saying, we don't know. Nobody knows anything in this case. We don't have the facts. So why are we dissing some people or or holding some people to accountable and not holding others. Why are we contacting? There's a difference about what ideas we put on our channel about, about what our thoughts are. Because we have to say that, that this is speculation, this is my thoughts, this is for entertainment purpose. It's all right to share thoughts, but once I start contacting the Sigma Chi boys and the fraternity boys and the sorority girls and like half of the other, the rest of the YouTube creators. I believe I'm one of the few ones who's not contacting Steve G and the families. What is going on? We're not supposed to be contacting the families. We're not supposed to be contacting the Sigma Chi boys. We're not supposed to be contacting Hoodie Guy. There's a difference between analyzing what we see in the few footages out there that they brought out there. Law and enforcement put the ban field out there. They, they are the ones who put out the grub truck. The family put it out. Or people got hold of it. But for us to be going into the 911 call, who called 911 was the question. So what's obsession? What is it for you not to understand that there's a gag order on this case? You're not supposed to be talking to these young boys. You're not in the same age. You're not in the same boundaries. You'll have nothing to do with each other. And I don't think it is right personally. Because I personally believe that the Sigma Chi fraternity boys could be involved. Allegedly. And we've heard that from Chief Fry. We've heard that from the prosecutor. That the 911 call is under gag order. So what is... What is what's obsession talking to them about? Isn't that breach of of the law in this active case? We have so many active and retired detectives on YouTube. None of them are calling Hunter. None of them are calling Steve or the families. 
none of them are calling WSU Kim or bringing them on the panel on their channels or dot. So I prefer myself. I would rather analyze what is out there. But I'm not going to spread misinformation on social media by talking to the Sigma fraternity boys who were under microscope, a microscope in the beginning. The president of the Sigma Chi said that there is no cameras in the bel uh, outside the building. So we wouldn't know who went out and who left, but we saw fig four figures running around that direction or towards that direction. So I personally believe that what's obsession needs to stop contacting the Sigma Chi fraternity boys. That is illegal as a therapist. Such things is what brings people to get their license to be revoked. We are not supposed to be indulging in an active case. By indulging in a case, by getting yourself involved, is by contacting people of interest. Yes, DM, Hunter Johnson, and what's her name, BF, are important witnesses. They were the people who first saw the crime scene. So this is just something I wanted to get out, get out there in the open because I don't think it's right that Walt's obsession is discussing it in panels and all and then trying to tell us how we should psychologically think. Number one about the roots of, uh, rules of mental health and psychology is don't get yourself indulged into active crime. It's not your crime scene. And we want the correct justice. Obviously, we don't know what Sigma Chi fraternity boys or Hunter Johnson is giving you so that you can take out and put it on YouTube so that rumors spread more and more. I don't trust the Sigma Chi fraternity boys personally because I still believe, I'm not saying they did something, but I said I believe there is so much unanswered questions from their side. Most of them were at the grub truck. We saw that. And odd behaviors was going on. Then you see the four figures running. You see the fraternity boys in the band field. There's so many things that I would like answers for. But for us, for any of us YouTube creators, bringing information allegedly from Steve or from his family or from Zana's parents. Zana's father won't even entertain us YouTubers and that is what I respect of him. Neither would his family. Steve is just in pain. He's trying to find information. But the people, the person who's contacting Sigma Chi is very, is extremely concerning. That's a dangerous move to make because we don't know what you're feeding Sigma Chi with. And we don't know what you're getting back from Sigma Chi. This is an active, active, high profile, profile police case. I'll give you an example. Just in case nobody knows who did this crime, they have to prove that BK did it. Just say if other people were involved and some of the boys from Sigma Chi fraternity allegedly were involved. Imagine how serious this uh, this could be because we have what's the obsession trying to spread because she keeps on saying no but I've spoken to them and they promised they haven't done anything and they promised they weren't there you're not a police integrator you don't have that professionalism or the skills you're not a police qualified person especially in this active case so you shouldn't be you shouldn't be contacting those boys those are college students. It looks really weird to start with. It really looks weird. And if they need a therapist or if they need a counselor, believe me, they'll get that for free in their school. That's why, that's what the deacons of the school said. So I don't understand why YouTube creators are so involved in this case. And then now, they... 
people who are already contacting, pers the person who's contacting Sigma Chi fraternity is allegedly trying to tell us not that they're innocent. How would she know they're in innocent? How would she know that they're innocent? Maybe that's exactly why they're contacting her. They want her to put whatever they want out there. Because how can she verify it? She wasn't there that night. She doesn't live there and she doesn't know them from Adam. I don't mean Adam like this case, but I mean Adam. She doesn't know them from Adam. I think it's completely wrong what is happening. And WSU came out said before, I am not saying WSU Kim is information is legit, legit. I'm not saying that it's false because I don't know WSU Kim from Adam. Neither does anyone else on YouTube or anywhere else. She could be lying or doctor could, her daughter could have known it. I tell him. Yes, I don't have a problem believing that because ABC News is clipped with ever. That clip has been like that interview has been edited now you won't find the whole interview but i put it on my channel she said we heard something happened to kaylee and i thought it was an accident we said i said don't panic it could be an accident and she's crying and then she said i tried texting or calling kaylee it was 10 a.m so this is the second time i'm hearing 10 a.m it's not only from kim's daughter so that can't all be a coincidence. I'm not saying Kim is telling the truth, but I'm saying that needs to be investigated. And I don't think I'll end by saying it's not right that anyone contacts the people who call 911. That is Hunter. What's obsession has no right, neither do I have, neither does any other YouTube creator or any other person for that matters. Because if Ann Taylor hears, or if the prosecutor hears that what's obsession on YouTube, a YouTube creator is contacting the man who called 911 Hunter Johnson, they could sue her for that. They could subpoena her for that. So she needs to stop talking about the Sigma Chi boys like she's the auntie or the mother. I'm being honest. This is not right. This is an active case. This is a quadruple. We want justice for the four victims. And then we have two YouTube creators opening a live stream on Xana Canodal is mother's name, Kara, trying to get us all YouTube world to come in and check what's going on so that we we come into the live stream and our views come up. And everyone definitely got excited when we heard that is for Zana's mother and Zana's mother, Kara, was there. Everyone came in to support Zana's mother. But what happened? Zana's mother was promised some money. The money did not, I don't know if it was paid back later, like it said now, but the money wasn't paid back to her. It wasn't paid back at once. The YouTube creators started discussing and arguing about the money. So where's the ethical morals about that? The ethical morals starts with boundaries. Don't call the parents on interviews. To our shows, we shouldn't be doing that. That's wrong. Especially when it's an active case. If you don't stop that and if you start, if you continue contacting the Sigma Chi like what the obsession is doing, then this case is going to turn like the Summer Wells' case. And everyone bringing Dawn Wells on the panel and talking to him behind stage. What are they going to tell us? Hunter. Why would I believe Hunter who did not look serious in the memorial? He was talking about E and he was 
laughing and smiling and blushing and saying that he owes the money and cracking jokes when this was one of the most horrific crimes Hunter should not be talking to anyone else anyone except law and enforcement who's what's obsession she shouldn't be talking to him and she shouldn't be bringing back her conversations of what Hunter said to the YouTube world because that's how rumors start and once they start they don't end Please like, share and subscribe. Condolence to the families. Let's respect the families. And let's respect the case by not contacting anyone from the college or anyone who could be involved in the case. And what's the obsession? I'm not saying anyone who could be involved in the case. Let me make it clear. Hunter Johnson is involved. He was the 911 caller. So please... Do not let this case go in the wrong direction. Because if BK did this crime, we want him to go in. But if you keep on in interfering with the people who call 911, you may end up getting it dismissed, a hung jury. Please like, share and subscribe. Have a lovely day.